Look at this. Do you, do you, do you see this? Today we're talking art, mainly illustration. Uh, I want to introduce you to a good friend of mine. You've probably seen here in one of my other videos, Three Photographers Challenge, but Erin Kim is a multi-talented creative, and today she's going to bring us in on her newest venture, Ink and Kimchi. I'm super excited because I love her art. She's super talented. I mean, this is dope. This is just vegetables, and I want to hang this in my house. Let's do a cool B-roll sequence and then get to know Erin. B-roll. I'm Erin Kim. I'm a Korean American illustrator based in Memphis, Tennessee. I enjoy creating work that focuses on intersecting society and cultural aspects. I grew up always doodling, whether it was in church or my cousin teaching me how to draw eyes. It was just something I always felt expressed what I was feeling inside pretty easily. So you were a photographer before, aren't you? Yes, I was a photographer uh, for maybe two years. <laughs> Specializing in like portrait and street photography. Why a change? Why a shift from photography to illustration? I enjoy photography because I enjoy capturing moments with friends or of people or just little glimpses of the everyday. But as it became more curated by, I guess, what was popular, I could not change or did not want to change to make the money. And so I was like, I think I could pursue illustration, pursue my style, um, and people would enjoy it. I wouldn't have to. Uh, edit or filter myself so much in illustration like I did in photography. My art is pretty, it's like a mix of graphic, like a, not comic book, but sketchy. Like you, it's not clean. Um, I like there to be smudges in certain areas. I like there to be a lot going on so that someone has to sit and look at all the different parts or moving pieces. The, there's different intersectional messages and that reflects a lot of my upbringing, my personal identity as a Korean American adoptee and how I was raised and where I'm at now. I think with whatever I create, um, whether it was photography or 
now illustration, even when I used to write a lot, I would always create things that I didn't see growing up or that I wanted to see more of in media. I grew up feeling very different. I was born in South Korea and came to the U.S. when I was six months. Um, and I grew up in a town where there was less than a thousand people and the only other person who looked like me was my adopted brother. And we were both from completely different countries, but we had each other in this town. And so I never saw an, a Korean woman, like an Asian woman to talk to uh, till I was maybe in college, which was 19 years old. So a lot of formative years were spent trying to figure out how to connect with people who you look very different from and you're treated very differently in society. And so now I feel like part of my calling as just a human is to figure out how to bridge differences. Also how to celebrate differences over deficiencies. Something I really need to learn more about and figure out for myself, but what I hope for with other creatives is like, why are you creating? And at the end of the day, if you, what does failure look like and what does success look like? Um, I've never been rejected so many times for proposals in illustration. Um, photography was very different and I feel like part of me gave up on it, but I feel like with illustration, I've experienced rejection and failure, but then I was fine with, I was okay with it because I, I came back home with what I knew I could do and that I could be better. I created for myself first before I created for anyone else. Um, and it's hard, to not take everything personal and how to fight, but also like how to fight for your work because you are an artist, so you are personally connected to things. That's a good thing. <laughs> it's not like a, a deficiency or a con. That's why we can only do this, like not everyone can. Not everyone can create with emotions and with their personality. Um, tell people where, you can, where they can find your stuff. My personal Instagram is one of a Kim seven, and then my art account is ink and kimchi underscore. And yeah, that's where I'm at. You can always contact me through there, or my email's on my account page. I never asked you what is the where does ink kimchi come from? Um, yeah, that name like changed so many times, but. I felt like I'm a very, I'm not very grungy, but I'm kind of, I like the, the dirty, I like inky stuff. Ink is what I, is my preferred medium. And then um, kimchi represents the food of my people. <laughs> kimchi. Thank the people. Thank the people. Thank you for listening and watching. Yeah, thanks for listening and watching this uh, <laughs> interview. Go buy this. Well, you can't buy this. Maybe soon. <laughs> <laughs> Kimchi. <laughs> First off, I just want to say thanks for watching. Please make sure you go and support Erin. She does amazing work. We had a ton of fun together. We've known each other for a while now. And so it would mean a lot to me and to her if you would consider supporting her on her creative journey. She's actually doing a fundraiser right now. A little bit more on that in just a second. Here's what's interesting. The timing of this video wasn't planned. I've been wanting to do a video for her for a while because she's a friend and she's a creative and I feel like creatives need to support other creatives. But in light of everything that's been going on, it just kind of landed at the right time. And so I asked Erin one last question. I think it'd be important to hear from her, to, to get her experience and understand through her creative eyes, but also through her eyes as a, a Korean American adoptee, uh, what it's been like living here in America in light of recent events. So here's that question. I'll see you guys on the other side of it. I feel like right now it is 
the most optimal time to be a minority female creative because people feel obligated to support you. Now, it's great financially um, because, yeah, bread. But also, you just never know if people are supporting your work because they like it and they think it's good or because they just feel in this burden to support minorities during this very distressful time. Um, and so for me, I just always, I do question things and wonder, wow, this person never said anything about my work before. Um, I hope that it is because they like it. I don't want them to just stick it on a bookshelf and let it collect dust. It's just a hard balance because I personally feel very uncomfortable with being a trend. I, I've done it before with adoption related topics. I've been on panels, I've been on podcasts, um, and it doesn't feel great to have a spotlight on you for something that will, you know will go away. Because um, at the end of the day, we're still here, we're still creating, we're, we're living our everyday lives. Um, and I hope that people continue to care because of who I am as a person, and like versus whatever BuzzFeed tells you to listen or look at. Or NPR, sorry, I don't know why. <laughs> I just threw both of them under the bus. What I tell uh, most of my white friends um, when they are asking how they can be better white allies. Honestly, it's what you say and do when we are not there. When we are not in the conversation, when we are not in the room with you. Do you stick up for us? Do you, um, you know, disagree with your, your mom or your dad who you're talking to? Like, that's when I really, and if I find out later, like, no, or yes, that's a huge thing for me. Um, I personally, I'm not asking you to go out and march, to make a sign, to even donate money, but money does talk. But I'm just asking you to ask yourself, why are you doing any of this? Because if it's because you care about the human next to you regardless, you can't go wrong. I believe that uh, the energy you push out that hits whatever is around you, that will affect you at some point. It's a ripple effect. So whatever world you think you wanna live in, that you hope to live in, um, like you have the ability to make it better. Like we all do. Me as an Asian woman, I, can be better. Everybody can be better. But when one part of the body is attacked or being attacked, it affects everyone else. You just may not feel it in that moment. So, so Aaron's actually doing a, a fundraiser right now that you can be a part of. I'm a part of it too. Uh, and it's simply buying some of her prints. All of the proceeds are going to uh, a friend's family who have a uh, been victimized during this the most recent uptick of, of violence towards Asian Americans. And, and Aaron thought it was important to sell her art and, and connect art to what's actually happening and make it an actual tangible thing that we can do to stand by our Asian American friends and uh, support and speak out against um, nationalism and violence towards uh, minorities. Because we don't got time for that. So again, link to her stuff is down below. Please consider checking it out. The prints she's putting out are dope. They're just so good. Like it's all the ink and the grunge that she talks about in the interview. So consider checking her out and supporting what she's about. Thanks for watching this week. It means a lot to me. I feel a lot less lonely having y'all here. And uh, if this video helped you feel less lonely, then you might want to consider subscribing, liking, commenting, uh, being a part of what we've got going on here being creative together and feeling less lonely along the way. Yeah, that, that's it. Have a good one, guys. Peace. Intersecting society and cultural aspects and then just my personality, which is pretty eclectic. <laughs> I don't know. That was really bad. I don't know.
don't know what to say. Uh, awesome. oh. I just had such a hard cringe. <laughs>